Do you like spicy? How about savory? Maybe sweet? Join me as I play with my food and explore unique combinations from around the globe. 100 Days Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations is brought to you by... With AMA Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands. Strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth, visit Napa Valley. Come with me to stamp your passport to delicious. I'm drinks and culinary expert, Leslie Sabraco. And I'm traveling, tasting, sipping, and savoring the world to share my bucket list of palate-pleasing experiences. I guess I guess right. On 100 Days, Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations. As a drinks expert, I'm often asked what makes the perfect wine or cocktail, and my answer is always balance. All of the elements have to marry seamlessly in order for you to find delicious. Well, the same is true in the culinary world. When you have a feast of flavors, they all have to work together. And we're gonna take a little trip, starting with a little sparkle and a lot of spice. And for that sparkle, Domaine Carneras, one of the most picturesque spots in all of Northern California's wine country, is the perfect place. Straddling Sonoma and Napa, it's hard to miss the imposing chateau that stands guard over rolling vineyards in every direction. This building was inspired by the Domaine's French founder, Tétanger, whose ornate Chateau de la Marquetrie is iconic in the Champagne region of France. In fact, this glass garden conservatory, dubbed Jardin d'Hiver, warmly echoes the Art Nouveau style of many French versions. It's the ideal place to indulge in their Bubbles and Asian Bites experience, highlighting one of my favorite food and drink duos. I'm with Eileen, one of the iconic women of wine <laughs> anywhere in the world. And it we're makes gonna... me old, <laughs> iconic. <laughs> you have an Asian pairing, Bubbles and Asian Bites, don't you? Yes, we do. So what we have in front of us are four sparkling wines and five bites. Mm -hmm. We have found over the years that Asian cuisine and sparkling wine is a perfect match. So what we're tasting today, Eileen, is sparkling wine. Not champagne. It's fine sparkling wine mm -hmm. made in the classic method that's been um, used for fine sparkling wines around the world. And champagne is also a sparkling wine, but it's from a particular region. So we've gone to the brut now, and the pairing is the spring roll? It's the fresh spring roll. Mm -hmm. It's not overly intense mm -hmm. in terms of the flavor. Mm -hmm. To me, that's textural. It's crunchy. Mm -hmm. You've got the crunchy vegetables, right? You're absolutely right. And then you're adding that, that wonderful fizz to wash it down. To wash it down and mm -hmm. clear your palate. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I see ahi tuna poke. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we've paired this with our rosé. I've got to spend a, a little bit of time on rosé sparkling because yes. it is my favorite because it's so beautiful to look at. And it pairs with everything because it's made with red grapes in a white wine style, right? You get this, it pairs with steak, it pairs with with tuna. And this wine is named for Madame Pompadour. And when you come into the Domaine Carnera Chateau, you'll see Madame Pompadour guarding the entrance. And Madame Pompadour was Louis XV's great paramour. And she was famous for having said that champagne is the only wine that a woman can drink and remain beautiful. <laughs> I love and, her. And if you drink enough, you don't really care if you're beautiful or not. And certainly whoever your partner, partner is is going to find you pretty darn much beautiful. Much more beautiful. Yeah, much That's more right. Beautiful. Well, a so, toast to Madame Pompadour. Pompadour, absolutely. And I'm going to try it with the poke. Oh, good. Because, again, you're, you're, you're pairing this nice textural component, right? The rich fattiness of the tuna. And the tuna, and there's a little avocado mm -hmm. uh, mousse on the top, so that's also um, creamy and, and bigger. But to me, what I get from the avocado and from the tuna is mm -hmm. that smoothness that we're going to echo in this wine, mm -hmm. right? So when I do roasted um, pears or roasted peaches on the grill in summer, we always have a bottle of this, a very simple dessert, and the, and the, the madam joins us. For <laughs> well, a glass of sparkling wine every day is really the rule. Santé. Santé.
Still with bubbles on my mind, there's another landmark sparkling wine producer nearby, Schramsberg, whose notable owners, the Davies family, have made classic wines poured by American presidents. They've uncovered and extended historic underground cellars on their property, and they're chock full of bubbly bottles. So you know where I'm headed. So this is Jay Schramm in your glass, and the Jay Schramm is named after our original founder, uh, Jacob Schramm was a German immigrant, started here in 1862, uh, making wine uh, here in the hills above the Napa Valley. This is a wine that is aged for eight years in contact with the yeast inside the bottle. In the to cave. give it that complexity. Absolutely. There, there were caves dug back in the late 1800s as well. We've expanded upon them mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. My parents arrived here in 1965, and so our family's been here for 54 years. Our team and is you, excited. And you rank among the best in the world in terms of sparkling wine. In our humble opinion, <laughs> absolutely. In my humble opinion, for sure. For sure, thank you. <laughs> and how many miles of caves do you have here at Schramsburg? We think of about two miles worth mm -hmm. of caves if you were to stretch them all out. There are about 35,000 square feet of floor space uh, in the side of the mountain. It's a pretty good sized building few, if it were above ground. And a few million, a Couple few million, million, million bottles, bottles, yeah, about three million of, bottles, about of three wine million bottles. aging. And they age for, for a long time, resting uh, here to gain complexity. About two years would be uh, the, the least amount of time, and then some of them were aging for eight years in contact with the yeast inside the bottle, and with uh, even a smaller, more limited amount. Uh, these days, we're starting to do things that are 15, 17, even 20 years. Explain what's going on in this, this riddling rack. So the, the riddling is done at the end of the aging process. The object is to, to turn these bottles effectively a quarter turn per day, uh, and, and there's just a little bit of a lift as well. So something like that, and then drop down to the next. The master riddler here can turn as many as 40,000 bottles. In, in one day. day? Yeah. So with this bottle here, you can see that we are going through the riddling process. Uh, a, a turn each day of each bottle will gently nudge this yeast all the way down into the to the crown, into the neck of the bottle. Uh, once once we're there, it'll take about six weeks, about 30 touches to get there. We'll then take these bottles to the finishing room, then freeze the neck containing the yeast in a plug of ice, pop the crown cap, the pressure will shoot the ice plug out, and we'll have a clear bottle of uh, Shramsberg Rosé. We've got to add the little dosage. You put a cork in there, and, and away it's we go. ready to go to drink it. That's right. Right, and that's how you get bubbles in the bottle. All that fizz makes me famished. What better than a little Caribbean food at Protea in neighboring Yountville, where Chef Anita makes her spicy empanadas. And oof, I'm hungry. You. Can't wait to cook with you. The empanadas is very easy. So we're gonna have some flour, salt, sugar, some unsalted butter, an egg, and then uh, some cold water and a little bit of vinegar. Just flour your surface. Our dough. A little bit of dough. Get a little bit of flour on your hands so nothing gets sticky on you. Okay. We have a couple of rolling pins over there. How did you start cooking and why do you love it so much? I love it because it's my fondest memory from when I was about three years old uh, in Puerto Rico, cooking with my mother, standing up on a chair, and having my great grandmother, my aunts, my my everybody in the kitchen, making an incredible dish out of very little because we were not very well off. We grew everything in our backyard or we had the protein come from my great grandmother's farm. Uh, later on in my life when I met Dwayne, my husband, he was the one that really opened up the culinary world for me. So now we're gonna roll this out. Don't put too much flour on it, okay. otherwise they get really dry. All right. Um, so you're gonna roll this out to about an eighth of an inch. All over South America, I mean, everybody has their own version of an empanada. So you want to turn okay. that so then you get... So I'm making more of a circular? Yes. And not an oblong? Come on, Leslie, you know how to roll I know, I need, to make it, I need to make it, it circular, not oblong. Ravioli, <laughs> let's go. Okay. I'm tired and I'm sweating already. <laughs> okay, so that looks all right. I'm okay. Uh, no. I passed muster. You're fine. So then, this is basically all you're doing. Okay. There's your empanada right there. One empanada. Yeah. All right, there's Anita's and here's Leslie's. Yes. We'll make mine a little... There you go. A little thinner. Okay, so today we're going to be using a sweet and spicy beef empanada. And it can take up to, you know, two ounces of meat. I, I mean, I stuff my empanadas. So you want to make it really nice and thin all the way around. And then, you're and gonna then we're going to braid. 
So you just want to tuck it into itself and, and go, they go on this side. nice and small. So, so what, what other empanadas do you make? I'll do crazy stuff like crab rangoons, mac and cheese empanadas. I'll make sweet empanadas. But the staples here are the uh, pork and the beef and the chicken. Look at you. That's a great <laughs> empanada. And you can actually bake these or fry them. I prefer frying them. I know it's a deep fryer, blah, blah, blah. But right. there's something so delicious and flaky and crusty about it. Especially empanada if we're going to have a glass of bubbles, which exactly. I saw somewhere. Exactly. She's teasing me with them. All right, the smell. Oh, I, I just, I can't you. wait to dig into yes, this. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, Do so I have to use a knife and a fork? No, I, absolutely I, not. Um, you can use whatever you want. Unless we have like the uh, jalapeno popper and panadas on, then I have to <laughs> warn people because it's like molten lava. Mm. But yeah, this is your work. You did a fantastic job. I'd love mm. to personally just tear it open, take a look at my work, and then have a bite because it's amazing. I just, I just bit. I just... Yeah. But be careful, it's really, really hot. Mm -hmm. Hot is in temperature, not mm -hmm. hot as in, although there is some nice kick here. Mm. My favorite thing is definitely sweet and savory. Mm -hmm. Like I said, developing those flavors, I love global cuisine, but I love incorporating the Caribbean and Puerto Rican flavors into that that's cuisine. Who you are. Yes, I get bored if I do just one thing, one thing, one thing. That's why my empanadas are across the board. <laughs> I picked a little wine to oh, go with yes. this because everything's better with, better with bubbles. Right? I agree. Everything is better everything, with bubbles. Everything, everything. Um, I chose actually a Prosecco di Valdo Biadne mm -hmm. uh, Superiore from Northern Italy um, because I think it's it's got freshness as well as a little touch of complexity yes. and just this whisper of fruitiness. Yes. That, you know, when you're talking about spicy, you need something to balance and foil it. To the spice of life, my dear. Thank you. Mm. Yes. And around the corner at Model Bakery, you can find a sumptuous treat. Buttery breakfast muffins. Oh, oh doesn't that smell good? It smells <laughs> heavenly. Smell lots of butter. And butter, <laughs> right? Yep. It smells like butter. And there's a line out the door to attest to the fact that everything is better with butter. Yep. So tell me about your English muffin. Um, well, these are a type of ciabatta dough, and we uh, roll them in uh, cornmeal, and then we fry them on the stovetop in clarified butter. And butter. About a half an inch butter. Right. Which makes them really light and airy and moist in the middle. And, and there is a delicious. reason these are Oprah's favorite thing. <laughs> and you've been on that list a couple of we, times, We've right? been on Oprah's favorite thing list two years in a row. There now we're going to be in our 20-year anniversary magazine. There so. we go. Everyone has their own preference. I mean, right. Some people like them with avocado on top, mm -hmm. for an avocado toast. A little butter. Mm-hmm. We use the Cliff Family Jams, which are local Very up in St. Helena. Let's try their peach jam. This right. one is delicious. All right. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's this absolute crunch on the outside from the cornmeal. You get that nice yep. little gritty, gritty texture. But then it's air. Yeah. It's, it's like a memory foam pillow <laughs> that just sinks in like it just, this. Yeah. <laughs> it absorbs all that butter. <laughs> so I brought a little camembert for us to try on one of the your muffins. muffins. How fun. And a little cider. I just finished my coffee, so now I feel <laughs> I, that I'm okay. So this is a nice local cider, the Goat Rock, and a rosé one with a little influence of passion fruit. Wow, that's a lot of camembert. <laughs> it's a good amount of camembert, right? <laughs> and cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Delicious. So good, right? So good. Spreading creamy camembert on my muffin reminded me of a recent visit to my sister's in Normandy, France, where I got to help make fromage near her house at the Saint Frere or Five Brothers Dairy. Hi, good morning. Those are some full udders. Press the button. Hold them here. And that's right. It's okay. I've had a breast pump. It's kind of what it's like. How many cows do you milk every day? So we milk every day 200 cows, 40 liters per day, 40. 20 in the morning and 20 in the afternoon. If you were doing it by hand. No, it's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> no, no. It's very hard to do so. it by hand. And I'm milking the cows. Welcome to France. My wardrobe choices don't usually include designer plastic bags to cover my boots, and hair nets and lab coats aren't exactly haute couture. We produce camembert with raw milk. The milk is heated to 37 degrees Celsius. 
It's then transferred to smaller tubs where the starter and rennet are added. After an hour, the milk is curdled enough to begin ladling into the molds. As the whey drains out, the curds compress so that more curds can be added. This is repeated four more times and everything is done by hand. A mold this high will eventually produce a cheese that's about an inch thick. Then off to another room full of one day old cheese. After a sprinkling of salt, the rounds of cheese are allowed to rest for one day before they're off to another room. This is where the cheese spends 15 days. It's where the penicillium grows. You can see it here. It looks furry. There's a nice furriness. Mmm, <laughs> a little bit more pungent, but it's a mild cheese, so right. Next, each round is wrapped in paper and allowed to age another 15 days. Ooh, it's quite chilly in here, but they look cozy in their traditional wooden boxes. This is a one month cheese. One month old. Before heating, we have to wait one or two hours because it's to bring too cold. it to room temperature. Yes, yes. Mmm, and now to eat some. So. Oh, look at that. Mm. It's rich and ripe and rich. kind of coats your palate with the, with the creaminess. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome. Fantastic. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is the taste of Normandy. Camembert mm -hmm. and cider. Mm. You like it? Makes yes. me happy. Mm hmm. Cheese is surprisingly good with cider, but I'm an advocate of pairing white wine and even sweet wine with a variety of cheeses. Back home, I continue my flavor journey, taking a cheese platter to pair and share with my friend Sarah. Decades ago, her family established Stony Hill, a slice of California wine history. In the early 40s, there were 10 wineries in the whole county that were in mm -hmm. operation at the time, you know, after hundreds in the late 1800s. Right. And this was an old goat ranch and it came up for sale. And my grandparents lived in San Francisco and wanted to uh, kind of get out of the city and do something different. Found their way up here in 1943. They planted all these vines that we can see. This vineyard was originally planted in 1948, mostly Chardonnay, but also some Riesling and some Pinot Blanc actually in the early days too. So forget red wines, right? I mean, yeah. you know. And there really, you know, there wasn't really a precedent for anything around right. here at the time. I am such a fan of white wine and sweet wine with cheese. Perfect. And people think red wine, right? They think, oh, I'm gonna pull out the cheese platter and do just red wine. No, I'm always saying sparkling white. And this is a farmer's cheese, so it's got, it's got the freshness to mm -hmm. it. And with the Riesling, it's beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So now Chardonnay. I think mm -hmm. of it as the classic California style of Chardonnay. It is crisp, clean style of Chardonnay. So this is a Vela Dry Jack. And, and sort of a, a salty character. Mm. So talk about savory, it's this one. This is phenomenal. Right. I, I mean, I, normally you would not think about pairing a cheese like this with Chardonnay, but no. Oh. Mm. That's good. You know what, it would I be really even like better that. though. <laughs> Honey. Honey. <laughs> it, that almost. It's like caramel. <laughs> it is like caramel. Mm. All right, so I see one more wine there over there. There is one more wine. When I first tasted this wine, I was so enamored with it. A Semillon de Soleil. We pick the fruit when it's a little bit riper than we might pick the, you know, the Riesling or the Chardonnay. And then we lay it out in trays in the sun to dry for two or three weeks. It gets a little raisiny in the sun and dehydrated and the sugar goes way up and you get this perfect combination of acid and sugar. And it's a wine that you could have with pork loin and, you know, cheese. Pork loin and cheese or dessert, or dessert. Or anything in between. This is uh, called Bay Blue. Any blue cheese, a blue cheese, a Roquefort, mm -hmm. something like that, has that salty intensity mm -hmm. that is matched so perfectly, so perfectly with, the, yeah. with the sweeter wine. And this needs, even though on the spectrum of dessert wines, this is definitely, no, definitely it's a it, milder right. end, mm -hmm. it's perfect with something like a very rich blue cheese. With that, I toast you. Cheers. A vote to santé. <laughs> Spicy empanadas with sparklers, savory cheeses with white wine, and last but not least, something sweet. I'm following my nose to Kohler chocolates to sample the sweet we love to eat. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good, nice to Good see to you. Good to see you. Yes. The smell in here is amazing. Yeah, I'm billowing out of here today. Oh, <laughs> chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. We're making chocolate sushi today. It's one of our <laughs> favorite products in the shop. So you start with Rice Krispie cookies, yep, pretty basically much. Basically, we started with puff rice, Rice Krispies. 
We go through the process of making it. We pulverize it like uh, a sushi mat would be, uh -huh. nice and sticky, the play on right. sticky rice. Right. And, um, you know, this is our makeshift nori. This is our white <laughs> chocolate, a little food grade colored cocoa butter. That's so good. Thanks, I know. <laughs> that is breakfast right there. That's great. They like that? Okay. We're gonna take our pate de and dark chocolate. The red part is a fruit jelly. We cook the fruit to a certain temperature, put some gelatin in it, and then we set it over a dark chocolate, a 72% Verona dark chocolate ganache. Nice and acidic, mm. blood orange. And Verona chocolate just gives you this bitterness and this creaminess, though. That's what we love. We just hit a little heat, so it's you want to get that chocolate just a little melted, and that the sticky rice is pliable. Basically giving you the blow dryer effect. <laughs> We're gonna start rolling like we would be at our favorite sushi restaurant when we wash them behind the counter. Right. We're gonna do the same thing. And we crimp it just like they would. We find where the uh, seal is, seal it up. You wanna just bend your thumbs up and over, just over the top, perfect. Like yep. that? Yep, you've done this before. You've made oh, chocolate sushi at home. I have not made no? chocolate sushi, but I've made my <laughs> fair share of Rice Krispie treats. I'll tell you that. Awesome. So this is where we hit a little more heat just to loosen up that marshmallow. See how it's oh, uh, yeah, coming now together? It comes yep. Oh, look yep. at that. Yep. That's so easy. Perfect. Now we have to put some roe on this thing, right? <laughs> we take some shredded coconut. I was going to say, it's coconut, mm -hmm. huh? And then we, uh, we put a little gin on there. And we put a little, a little gin. Uh -huh, a little gin on there. <laughs> Think you're the best thing ever. <laughs> the high alcohol evaporates. We put a little colored powder on there to make it orange. Right. Let it sit for a day or two and it's dry. Mm -hmm. Next part. How many pounds of chocolate? There's about 50. If you want to make a lot of chocolate, you're going to have to have one of these. Okay. Oh, that's so fun. Can I do that? Uh huh. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit it again. Okay. Pull it away. That's a lot of chocolate. That's a lot. <laughs> You're good. Let go. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We're gonna put chocolate oh. all over this. We're gonna coat the whole thing. Okay. Get our little seam over there. It's gonna help it stay shut. Help it clean. I'm gonna roll it in here. Work, work, work. <laughs> I like this day at the office. Be generous. More, more. More, more is better. More, more is, is better. always better. <laughs> Perfect. It's like surgery now. Mm-hmm. An art form. Back to the coconut rope. Look at that! That's it. Okay, now we're gonna slice it just like we would. And of course, how would Chop we eat sushi? We eat it with our. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. As a kid growing up, my mother used to make these Rice crispy treats and she'd cover them in melted chocolate and sometimes butterscotch chips and call oh, them scotcheroos. Scotcheroos! Scotcheroos! My manager, Jen, brings scotcheroos to us <laughs> every holiday season. Yes. <laughs> that reminds me of a scotcheroo, awesome. a really great scotcheroo. They're There's savory. the acid kick from that jelly. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. At the end of this whole process, how would sushi come in a store? Like this? Just like that. Our wasabi. Our wasabi. And our, our ginger. ginger. All right, ten ninety five. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Twenty four ninety five. <laughs> Most people know us for our shiny, colorful chocolates. We like to bring the chocolates to life the way they started in nature and keep that color transferring to our final product in the chocolate. Can we go taste them? Let's go check it out. Let's taste them. So these are all bonbons, and um, they basically have the ganache filling on the inside mm -hmm. and the tempered chocolate on the outside. This is our signature chocolate. It's our fennel pollen. And so just the very tip of the flower where the pollen falls out, we collect that pollen, and it has a gold yellow mm -hmm. hint to it. We set it in a milk chocolate. That is just like fennel pollen exploding. <laughs> I mean, it's just so aromatic and so intensely flavorful. And I love, I love, love, love fennel. I brought something special for you. Oh. Benedictine is a liqueur, centuries old liqueur. More than two dozen herbs and spices. So I thought this would be a lovely way to sort of showcase the spicy and the oh. savory and the sweet that you have because you're getting all of that character in this. That aroma, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Isn't that glorious? That's glorious. There's a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. We got a nice spice on the tongue, a nice acid. I, I wish I could identify every single one of those. I was going to say, you're going to have to make a chocolate like it. I think so. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for helping me learn more about your beautiful chocolate. My pleasure. This has been a journey of discovery of 
the way that flavors can intersect and marry so beautifully together. It's not just about something spicy or something sweet or something savory, but how they each play with one another. So you can have the tingle of spice in an empanada, and you can have it in a piece of chocolate, and you can even have it in a glass of Benedictine. You can have the savoriness of a cheese platter, and you can have the savoriness of a fennel pollen chocolate. You can also have that sweetness that ties every one of those things together in an ending that will make you raise your glass to this feast of flavors. Cheers. 100 Days Drinks Dishes and Destinations is brought to you by with AMA Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands. Strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth. Visit Napa Valley. For more information on all episodes, along with our expanded digital series, including behind the scenes footage and stories, and links to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, go to 100 Days Drinks Dishes Destinations.com. Got a little. But he's got to get money out. Oh, sorry. I told him you got you to run a business here. <laughs> I saw the toothbrush over the there. Toothbrush, yeah. We brush our teeth at a the chocolate, end of the day. Uh -huh. A chocolate toothbrush. Perfect. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Oh, she's got it. Mira, she's got it. Another tough day at the office. <laughs>